So next, next let's talk about the weight updates and how we're gonna learn the weights on, this, um, on these classifiers. So the way the algorithm works is you start with a weight vector of all zeros, and then you loop through all of your training examples. And for each training example, you classify with the current weights that you have, whether or not, it's a, whether or not the classifier thinks it's positive or whether or not the classifier thinks it's negative. And if the classifier is correct, if the label that it classifies is the same as the correct label, then it doesn't make any change to the weight vector, and it's happy. If it's wrong, then it adjusts the weight vector. And so, more specifically, um, if you have your example x, and then you have your feature vector, which you've computed, f of x, right here, and then you have your weight, um, weight vector right here, and then you take the dot product, and you either compute it to be plus one or minus one. So in this case, the classified feature vector would be plus one. And then right now you don't know if it's correct or incorrect. Um, if the actual label is plus one, then you don't do anything. But if, F, if the label corresponding to this example is actually negative one, then you adjust the weight vector by adding or subtracting the feature vector. And you add the feature vector if the correct label is plus one and you subtract it if the correct label is minus one. So what this looks like is if it's a positive example, it will move the weight, director, weight vector more towards your example. It will increase the component of that weight, weight vector that's in the direction of your feature vector. And if it's um, incorrectly classified as a negative example in this case, then what it will do is it will subtract this feature vector from the weight vector. Um, so the exact equation is right here. Um, so in this case, y star, let's say that y star is equal to negative one, and this is incorrect. So what will happen is you will take your feature vector right here and then subtract that. So y star is negative one, f is this vector right here. And what you'll do is you'll subtract that from your weight vector and then you'll get this new weight vector w right here. And w is equal to the original um, minus f. So the new, let me, let's call this w prime. So W prime will equal W plus Y star times F. And if you try and make a new classification with this new weight vector, you'll see that it's actually be, uh, more likely to be correct on your data. It might not necessarily be exactly correct after only one update, but what you'll see is that if you take this new ve weight vector and dot product with F, the result is the original prediction, which is w dot f plus y star times f dotted with itself. And because a vector dot product with itself is always positive, and then um, the new classification based on the new weight vector will be closer to y star. Yes, you loop through all of your training examples in order, and if it's incorrect, then it will update the weight. Um, however, it doesn't consider, it doesn't change the weight vector if the um, feature vector is correctly classified. Um, if you order it a specific way, you might get to a solution faster that correctly classifies the data, but the order is fixed. Um, so in general, no. You only update it once. And so for each feature vector, you update it once, and after you update it, it might not necessarily get it right that time, but you just move on to the next training example. Um, and then later, you might come back to that point um, in which it's incorrectly classified, and then update it again. Good question. Yes? Yeah, so we'll see if there's noise in the data, what happens. And it actually turns out that it doesn't do very well if there's um, outliers or noise in the data. 
Yes? Um, so this is a vector because this is the current. Um, so this is so this is well. So this is what w prime equals, and then when you take the dot product with f, that's the new classification that you make after you update. So this is a vector right here um, because y is just an integer. And f is a vector and w is a vector, both in the same space. And then when you take your new w prime and take the dot product with f, then you'll get an integer um, or a, a real number. And if that's positive, then you then the new classification will be um, will be plus one. If it's negative, the new classification is minus one. Okay. So once you make this update, this is your new weight vector. Then your decision boundary, instead of being like here at this. It will instead move to be um, again orthogonal to the weight vector, and um, this is after one update. So, seeing how this works um, in practice, so if you have the um, all these negative points in blue and all of your positive points in red, and in the case where your data is separable, which means that there does exist a separating boundary between these points then you will first might get this example, which will push the decision boundary that way. And then you'll look at another example, which will push it back in the other direction. Uh, it might move it too far, as you'll see here. And then you look at another point, um, which will move it back in the other direction. Um, and it keeps on thrashing around until finally, at some point, it'll reach the place, reach the um, location where all the data points are correctly classified. And once all the data points are correctly classifi classified, then it's done. And if it stops iterating, there's no more updates. And this is somewhat dissatisfying because you don't know, how, you don't have any guarantees on wh where it's going to stop. This isn't necessarily the best hyperplane you could get um, or the best line in this case because we're in 2D. It might be um, better to get a line that separates the data, data nicely, and you also don't know, um, it's thrashing around for quite a bit. And later we'll look at ways to uh, make this better. So any questions on the binary case? 